Hello and welcome to this webinar on authentic campaigns. For those joining us live, thank you very much. For those who are listening to the recording, it's fabulous to have you also joining us at a later date with the wonders of technology. Let's jump in. It's really important to choose how you tell people about your business that is for your customers, suits your products and services, and is directed by your strategy. Just because everyone else is doing something doesn't mean that you also need to market your business the same way. Both the Savvy Research and Dynamic Strategy webinars have led us to this webinar here on Authentic Campaigns. If you haven't yet caught up with those, I will send you a link in your email after this webinar has concluded. So who am I? I'm Rachel Allen. It's great to have you listening in today. I've been a marketer for 25 years. I've worked with micro business through to large business, helping them with startup growth and succession. I've worked with not-for-profits, government, and within many, many, many industries. I love empowering business owners to be the best versions of themselves, allowing them to achieve balance and create success by their own definition. I love traveling and camping with my family, reconnecting with them with very little distractions, i.e. phones, taking the time to read and play and to be inspired to get my camera out and take photos of landscapes and my gorgeous dog and, dog and daughter. These two light me up on a daily basis, making me laugh, smile and frustrating me with their antics and I wouldn't have it any other way. So today you are in the absolute right place if your marketing makes absolutely no sense to you, if it is completely overwhelming, if it is just not working, whatever you try isn't getting the people through the door. If you really want growth in your business, you're here in the right place and more so if you are ready to make a change in your marketing and in your business, then we're here to help you. So authentic campaigns. Campaigns make your marketing seem simple. Once you have the research about your business and created a strategy, it is about creating the campaigns that will reach your audience. Hence why the last two webinars have led us to this one. So being authentic in the delivery of your campaigns will make or break your marketing. So what do you need? You need a plan. A plan enables you to think big and dream about your business, allows you to set goals, create actions. A plan will keep you focused on developing and growing your business the way that you want it to. When you have taken the time to create a plan, you can only realise the benefit of that time by actually implementing it. Effective implementation starts with breaking down your actions into daily, weekly, monthly and quarterly tasks so every day you are doing something to achieve your goals. When you are doing your tasks, you will be able to start creating processes and procedures, especially for those repeating tasks that you don't actually need to do. Once you have the process documented, you can either automate or outsource that task to someone else. When you outsource to an experienced person, providing them with your procedures and also plan, they will be able to complete the task your way and also working towards your goal. I can help you create the plan and I can also manage your implementation either with your team or with my team. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to dig deeper into connecting to your brand, your digital marketing, passion planning, and being confidently you and moving forward. Let's start. Connecting to your brand. Today, people do not buy from brands. They buy from the people behind the brand. The owner, the grower, the maker, 
the factory worker. We want connection and we want the stories. Personal marketing is about promoting you as a name, not a brand. So it's time to step out, stretch yourself, tell your story and become your brand. And in 2019, personal branding is set to be the biggest impact in marketing that you can do. So with storytelling, Eve John quoted this at a recent Marketing Conversations event that we held. Stories give us the ability to connect faster with people. Getting your clients to know you, like you, trust you 10 times faster. Telling your stories, the story of your business and the products or services you sell helps you to be positioned as the authority or expert in your field. So where do you tell your story? You could write a book, give keynotes, write blogs, be interviewed by the media, use it on social media or your website. Which leads us into generating content. Generating content is probably one of the biggest problems that business owners have. Being able to create enough new stuff to keep their audiences engaged, interested, finding out about your business and ultimately buying from you. So once you have ideas of things that you want to talk about, it's then presenting them. So where can you go? What can you do to actually get your stories out there more and to, to create the content for your business? You could be involved in live events. You could write case studies or white papers. You could facilitate programs or courses. You could take part in video and live streaming, like on Facebook. Write blogs, either for your own blog or for others. Create your own podcast or be interviewed on podcasts. Or do webinars as well, a perfect way to get your expertise out about an area. Once you've created this content and then you've put it out there in whatever format you want, you need to be able to repurpose it. So if you do a webinar, so for example, this webinar that I'm doing today actually forms the basis of some of the content for a book that I'm writing. It could be that you write um, a course, put together a course, and then you pull some of the information out of the course to be your social media and you actually use that as posts on social media. Um, books are a great way to pull extract information out of books so that you can create courses, you can do webinars, you can create content for social media. It's about just continually repurposing the content that you have. And the final area is communication. How do you get it out? So we've talked about the format, what it might be. We've talked about the idea. So then how do you communicate that out with your audience? And you can do that through digital, which we're going to talk more about in a moment. You could look at advertising. So things like print media, magazines, um, TV, radio, that traditional forms of marketing, running promotions where you could do sales or you could give away merchandise like key rings or bookmarks or t-shirts or hats, sponsorships, all that sort of thing. You'd also look at publicity and publicity is seeking newspapers, magazines, um, TV shows who will run a story on you that isn't advertising. So you're not paying for it. And that's when your story needs to be really concise and clear as well. So what is right for you when you connect into your, um, into your brand? How do you know what is going to work for you? So given that people need to see your business anywhere from three to 12 times before they act, it is important to add many different methods into your campaigns. It's also important that whatever you do is integrated across all of your business, ensuring consistency of brand, and also service. 
let's jump into your digital marketing now. So when we talk about digital marketing, the world of digital is so big, it's deep, and for many people it's quite scary. And you can easily lose yourself down a dark tunnel of SEO, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and so on. However, you only need to be seen where your customer is. I'll say that again. You only need to be seen where your customer is. It's not critical that you're on every single social media platform if your customer is not on all of those social media platforms, and they very rarely are. So way back in the webinar where we talked about getting clear on your customer, it's really important to be clear on your customer so you know where to spend your time. Whatever you do on digital marketing, ensure continuity of brand and consistency in approach. Okay? So it doesn't matter where you are, what you do, as long as you are being consistent. Let's dig into websites. Now, I will often say to my clients when I am coaching them, or when I get asked the question, do I need a website? And the answer is absolutely yes, you need a website. Your website is the only thing on the internet that you own. It is the only thing that you have total and complete control over your URL names, over your, the look of your website, the feel of your website, the content that goes on your website. It is the only part of the digital world that you have that control over. So you absolutely need a website. When you are getting a website, it needs to be designed well and look good. It needs to be functional in that it does what you say it's going to do or need it to do. You have it on a secure platform as well. And I recommend using open source. And open source means that it's developed freely and it's um, a range of developers around the world that are working on it. And things like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, they're all open source websites. You need to have your analytics put on it, which is literally a code from Google Analytics and you put that into your website and that helps you to measure your traffic and see where it's coming from, the way people move around it and also your socials as well. And it needs to have some basic SEO. Initially, with it building up, obviously, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Now, that's not paid advertising. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. SEO is literally free. Okay, you may pay someone to do the SEO on your website, but what they're doing is helping you, your website, to organically get reach and to get traffic. You're not pay for it. So in a nutshell, that is your website. Now, digital strategy, which we're going to dig into a little bit more. There's a whole range of stuff that you can do on the internet that will help drive traffic, traffic sorry, into your website. And this is basic search engine marketing as well. So you can be producing emails and sending out emails to your database um, on social media and what platform you are on will depend on um, where your audience is. You can be doing things like listing on directories. You can have be writing guest blogs for others or have your own blog, um, have your own podcast or be guest on another podcast. You could be doing paid advertising, so you pay per click with Google, with Facebook, with um, on other, you know, when you can pay for a banner ad or, or links on other websites. So anything that is about generating your reach online. And like I said, there's a whole range of things that you can be doing online that is about sending traffic to your website. And anything you do online, you need to, your aim needs to be to try to get traffic into your website. Your website is your, where your real sales happen. You may have a store on there, um, you may have event bookings, whatever it is that you do is sitting on your website, that is where you want to funnel people into. So like I said before, it's like a dark tunnel. Once you start with digital marketing, 
you're not really going, you, you can be di continually digging deeper, 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 deeper. As long as you are still reaching your target market, continue doing things online. Always measure things as well, which will help you with your time that you use on social media or on social and your website. Use Google Analytics to help measure the success of all your digital communications. Each platform, social media platform and email lists also has their own insight data. Review it all regularly to see what is working, what your audience likes and also what you can improve yourself with. The next area of creating authentic campaigns is to have passion planning. So the heart of your marketing plan is stepping it all out into easy, doable steps. Breaking down everything into weekly, monthly, quarterly actions. All throughout this, you need to stay connected to your plan. And for some people, that's really quite hard to get excited about the possible outcomes and to fill the process with passion. Now we've already spoken in previous webinars about how you need to really dig in and find out who your ideal client is to create client profiles. You need to create messaging that is on point for those people. You need to understand your products and your services. You need to have a knowledge of your competitors. You need to truly get in and understand your business quite deeply and everything that you offer. You then need to put a strategy and a big picture in there. So you need to set goals that really stretch you and drive your business forward as well. So all of that is really quite high level stuff. And now we're getting into the nitty gritty of how are we going to make that plan actually happen? How are we going to make those goals happen? How are we going to connect with those customers? And to do that, you need to step it out into actionable spots. Otherwise, it just becomes a goal that you put on your wall and you never do anything about. And it's about creating the campaigns that's going to meet your goals and reach your customer as well. So that you need to keep the passion there, the passion that you have for your business, your why for being in business needs to shine through when it comes to the actual doing and all this implementation. So fill the process with passion. It also doesn't need to be hard. Don't get bogged down in it. Just keep it simple. And remember, there's only so much that you can achieve in six months or in a year. So make sure that whatever you create for yourself to do in this area of planning out your campaigns is that it's achievable. So where do you focus? It's so easy to jump in and start doing everything. You know, doing a bit of Google ads and doing social media and being on Facebook, being on LinkedIn, starting up Snapchat. Before long, you run out of time to administer all of this and it just lays there dormant. You've lost your consistency. Start with one thing, one funnel. Make that work really well before you move on to the next thing and try something new. Look at your ideal client. Which option do you think would appeal to them the most? Where is there a gap in the marketplace and how can you fill it? Do you have the resources and the budget to make it happen? And we've already talked earlier about the resourcing that you need to make your marketing happen and also realistic budgets. Finally, when you look at something, an action that you need to do, does it excite you? Does it scare you a little bit? Is it gonna make you step outside your comfort zone? Because that's good. If you look at it and go, oh yeah, that again, I'm just going to send out emails, then you need to change it up because to continue to grow, you also need to step out of your comfort zone. We're going to talk in a minute about having the confidence to actually do your marketing properly. So you've focused, we've got the actions. What you need to do is create project plans. Okay, so planning is at the heart of every successful business. Ask any successful business owner and they have a plan. 
They've got a plan that they're excited about, a plan that is authentic, dynamic and savvy, a plan that's not just based on a template, but one that is unique to them. Within that plan, they have their actions, they have their project plans. Project plans that map out their campaigns. Plans that simplify your marketing right down. It's the doing bit, it's the simple thing. If you have a project plan that you've created as part, that helps you to achieve your goals, reach your target market, you're going to be able to outsource that to someone so easily by saying to them, I need this messaging on these platforms in this time frame. I need you to seek PR. You know, this is the campaign. This is what we're doing. It makes everything so much more simpler to outsource and have someone else actually run it for you. So moving confidently forward with your marketing. You know when they say the only thing holding you back from business success is you? Well, it's totally and completely true. In fact, I've just got off the phone on a coaching call with a client where it's not actually her ability to move forward, think bigger, and her confidence. It's her business partner that's holding her back, which is really quite interesting. But it's the mindset of her business partner that's holding them both back. A lack of confidence in you is the only thing that's stopping you from getting what you deserve. Frances Bridges states that confidence is built on choices and accomplishments that feed your passion, that make you feel happy and they're proud of who you are. So I really believe that confidence is tightly connected to your mindset, that the words that you think, your inner dialogue, who you are. So here are some tips that I've got to help you build your own confidence. Be true to your personal values always and create boundaries. Have your rules for how you're going to operate your business. Have your rules for how you're going to show up in life. Create boundaries that you put in place that show people that you know, this is your work time. This is your home time. This is what you do in your business. This is what you don't do in your business. These are the type of people that you work with or the ones you don't. Make sure that your business is tightly aligned to your values, which I've also spoken about in an earlier webinar. Look after yourself. Exercise. Eat well. Be hygienic. Sleep. Drink lots of water. Use positive affirmations and question your inner critic. If you wake up every morning with positive words going through your head, you're going to get out of bed in a much better way than if you woke up and went, oh, it's another day today, I've got to do, 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 do. oh, there's kids screaming, I've got to get up. You know, if you actually wake up and go, I've got this, today's going to be a good day, today's the day. This is it. We've got it. I'm getting out of bed now and I'm going for it. You know, those positive words of being true to who you are. And when you are wanting to step outside your comfort zone, when you're wanting to try something new, and that inner critic is in your head going, oh, why would you do that? You know, last time it didn't work. Or who do you think you are going out and doing a Facebook Live? No one wants to hear from you. Shut that inner critic down straight away. Change the wording. Of course people want to hear from me. I've got a really interesting story to tell. Okay, so you question your inner critic always. Stand up for yourself. This is something that's actually, I've learnt this year particularly, that it's drummed in from primary school. That, you know, if you're in a situation where someone's picking on you, someone's bullying you, someone's intimidating you, someone's making you feel bad. And it happened to my daughter earlier in the year. The teacher basically said, walk away from it. Well, why should you walk away from someone who's not very nice? Because it's not, it's no benefit to that other person 
if at the tender age of seven, they're learning that they can say what they want, they can hurt people's feelings, they can hit people if they want. And all that's going to happen is the other person's going to walk away. There's no punishment, there's no retaliation, there's no, you know, learning that that is not the behaviour you should have. So stand up for yourself. Don't be afraid to stand up um, and stick up for, for who, your beliefs, your values and what you think is right. Always think big picture in your business. It's very easy to get stuck into the day-to-day -day part of your business where you're just running and you're paddling away madly while you're trying to appear like you're the duck floating on top of the water, nice and calm. So always make sure that, and it's one of the reasons I always get people to break their goals down so much, is, is that no matter how much running you're doing just to keep on top of your business, you're still doing things that is going to help you achieve your goals and not just getting caught up in the day-to-day -day stuff. Don't care about what other people think. Does it really matter what other people think about you? Do more of what makes you happy. It'll fill you up. It'll make you feel better. It'll make you ready to take on the world more. So do more of what makes you happy. Reduce your stress. We ran a webinar earlier on in the year um, about managing overwhelm. And managing overwhelm goes hand in hand with reducing stress out of your life. If people make you feel stressful, if situations make you feel stressful, then get rid of it or manage it so that it doesn't make you feel stressful. I have a relative of mine coming to stay in a couple of weeks. He makes me stressful. He adds stress to our house. So what I'm doing about it is I'm actually making sure that we're not here as much. And I've already warned him that we're not going to be here because we work. Create a happy, clean home. I don't know about you, but if my house is out of control, I'm feeling out of control in my life as well. So have a happy, clean home. That's your sanctuary. That's where you want to go to, to relax, to unwind, to tune out of your business. Do something that scares you. Step out of your comfort zone. Challenge yourself once a month, once a quarter, do something that scares you. And it may not necessarily be jumping out of a plane, even though that would scare me terribly. It could be you go out and have coffee by yourself. Maybe you um, jump on a Facebook Live and do a Facebook Live. Do something that scares you. It's going to make you step out of your comfort zone. Once you've done it a couple of times, you're going to go, why did I not start doing this years ago? This is great fun. And here's a little bit of my story in here about moving confidently forward. Last year, I spent $10,000 on personal and professional development. The biggest thing I learned was that I knew how to do what I was being taught. What was stopping me was a lack of confidence in my own ability. And yes, I did learn things. Yes, it was valuable. I met some awesome people. But the biggest thing for me was I need to back myself and I need to believe in myself more. So can you relate to any of these? And this is um, Many of my clients have said this to me. I don't like photos of myself. Now, we're in the world of personal branding. You need a profile picture on your social media. You need photos on your website. People want to see who you are. So it's really important. Photos, um, video, all of those are really, really important for you to do. So you just have to do it. So many people don't because they, you know, they, they don't like seeing themselves. Or, you know, they're, they're getting a new hairstyle or they want to lose some weight, whatever it is. At the end of the day, these are excuses. You just lack confidence to put those photos and videos up of yourself. The other excuse I hear from clients is I don't like speaking in front of people, even though they have an amazing story to tell, even though they have great knowledge to impart on people. Again, it comes from a lack of confidence. I've done some awesome public speaker training through Janelle Johnson. 
And the thing that she says is if you're standing in front of an audience and you're feeling nervous, it's because you're thinking about yourself and you're not there for you. You're there to serve your audience. So again, it comes down to a lack of confidence. I hear I can't make a sale. And there could be so many reasons. It could be that your marketing's not working. You've got a product that doesn't, you know, that your ideal customer doesn't want to buy. You know, there's a whole range of things as to why you can't make a sale. At the end of the day, often it's a lack of confidence. It's a lack of you actually going out and asking for the sale. I can't do marketing. I have a lot of people come to me and say, I can't do marketing. Again, it's a lack of confidence. Sometimes it's also a lack of knowledge about what marketing is, but often it's a lack of confidence that they just can't get out there and put their business out there, put themselves out there to get the sales and to tell people about what they do. So back yourself. That was my biggest learning last year. I need to back myself. Get a cheer squad as well. You know, those people who get there and they just cheer you along and move forward confidently in your business and in your life. Now we still have a little bit of time, so I wanna throw in this little extra bit for you. And it's talking about implementation and sales. So you've got the plan, obviously you need to implement it, okay? So these are the four steps that I, send people through. You need to engage with empathy, progress to like, trust your customers and show gratefulness as well. So let's look at engaging with empathy. Engagement is the first step in getting people into your marketing funnel. At this stage your messaging needs to speak directly to your customers. Your levels of engagement will prove how well you understand your customers. Step into your customer's shoes and see your marketing and sales from their perspective. Show some empathy. So go and have a look at what you're doing, stepping into your customer's shoes. Progress to like. Once people move further into your funnel, joining your group, signing up to webinars, etc., you are confirming that you are addressing their excuses, pains and desires, just as we identified in the Savvy Research webinar. Your people are progressing closer to a sale and hopefully being a lifetime customer of yours. Trust your customers. Once a customer pays you money, it is not always the end of the relationship. You need to not see this as a transaction or the end of the road. This is your chance to create loyal and repeat customers and customers who will refer you to others. And finally, gratefulness. It's important for you to show gratitude in your life and gratefulness to your customers. It's important to understand that not all customers are going to be happy either. And criticism is also an important feedback mechanism, allowing you to pivot your business change your marketing or even the offerings that you have in your business. So be grateful for the people who give you that feedback. If you're feeling inspired today to jump into your plan and start creating it, I have a five day marketing challenge that you can sign up to for free. We also have a range of services we provide to help you with your marketing plan from BYO to done for you options. I'm going to send all of that out to you in an email. To help you delve deeper into the variety of ways for you to market your business, I host a marketing conversations event. Our next one is coming up on December 13 and this one will help you to think bigger about your business. You can register to attend for free on the link that I'm also going to send to you in an email very shortly. And finally, if you're looking for support, I have limited places available for coaching that starts next year. I have nothing left in my diary for this year. In these sessions, you can bring up anything about your marketing that you're stuck with, you're confused about, or you're just wanting to brainstorm ways to move forward. A single session is just $100. And again, I'm going to send you more information about that in an email. And I do hope to see you in one of those things. 
So I'm committed to empowering business owners to be the best versions of themselves by achieving balance and creating success by their own definition. I believe that you can grow a successful business by having authentic, dynamic and savvy marketing. And in 2019, I have a book coming helping you to get your marketing together. And you are going to be one of the first to hear about that with a pre-order campaign launching in early 2019. So I took this gorgeous photo at the Bay of Fires in Tasmania. We took our camper over Bass Strait and toured Tassie for two weeks a couple of years ago. This was our very first stop and I could have easily just stayed here. Um, it totally blew my mind, the Bay of Fires. With an open mind, I went to the coldest state in Australia and I discovered the best beaches in Australia. And if only it was a couple of degrees warmer to enjoy them. So open your mind and your business and you too could see some amazing sights. So thank you so much for being here. You are awesome and I hope that you have an incredibly wonderful day.